Hi, this is Dan Collins, Editor-in-Chief of Futures Magazine for Traders Exclusive, coming to you live from the floor of the Chicago Board of Trade. Uh, I just got back from, uh, from warmer climes in Boca Raton, where the Futures Industry Association held its 39th annual uh, event in, in Boca Raton, and I, I can report that the industry seems a little healthier. There's more than 1,000 attendees there, and um, I, I kind of wrote about during the FIA in Chicago this past fall that there was kind of a pallor over the industry because of regulation and fees. But it seems to be, um, if not a really positive vibe, that people are kind of in the industry are looking to, to get on with it. The CEFs are approved. Uh, a lot of the regulations are in place. So if people aren't happy with it, they, they've acknowledged that it's, it's kind of reality and they're moving on. But I think the most interesting thing that uh, I, I saw down there is that the FIA honored uh, Robert O'Brien Sr. and RJO Futures. RJ O'Brien is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. And in an era that we've seen so much turnover in FCMs, um, you have to kind of wonder why. And I had a, a chance to talk to uh, Bob O'Brien Sr., who, who will turn 96 years old next week. And I, I thought a key of what, what he had said to me is from the start of the brokerage, they didn't trade and they didn't allow any of their brokers to trade. You know, he was a salesman, they were in brokerage and they knew what their, their business was and they kind of stuck to it. And if you look at, at, at some of the failures over the last year, so it was people who kind of had different models and didn't know exactly what their model is. Uh, MF Global uh, tried to turn themselves into an investment bank. Uh, I, I spoke to you in, in, in the past about CTAs and wondering whoever you're, you're allocating to, you know, whoever is raising money for a CTA, how are they being paid? You want them, their, you want uh, your goals and theirs to be aligned together. You don't want necessarily someone to, be, to learn that, well, maybe they're, they're making money on the brokerage on the, on the other opposite end of it, and they push you more to a more active manager who has, you know, trades more. You want the manager, you, and whoever's, you know, you're accessing the manager through to, to earn by the performance of the fund. And I think that kind of helps you in deciding where to put your money and who you're working with to have your have all your interests aligned. So you don't want your broker to trade? No, you want them to provide the best service for you. You want that to be where they're getting their money from, whoever you go through. So it's something you have to look for and uh, something that it kind of makes sense, especially if you, if you want to stay in this the business for a long time, like 100 years like RJO did. This has been Dan Collins, Editor-in-Chief of Futures Magazine for Traders Exclusive.